um, we're going to go into the second uh, video uh, on the, the series for self-esteem. Um, not really sure um, how many videos will be in the series series altogether, um, but we're gonna we're gonna go through and, and touch on some things. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, the book that I'll be reading from is called "The uh, Six Pillars of Self Esteem" by, by uh, Nathaniel Brandon. Um, and I'm not gonna be uh, following the book, you know, uh, uh, chronologically or whatever, uh, from like you know straight through the chapters. I'll jump around uh, the book, the book uh, or in the topics as I believe uh, is relevant to the topic that I are that I want to present. Right. Um, and I, I would actually appreciate your comments, whether positive or negative. Uh, let me know uh, what you think um, and uh, let me know what I could do better or uh, other things that you would like to see. Uh, in in future videos, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, give me some ideas for topics that you would like to see on something that I could bring to you educationally. Um, again, I do videos on on daily life skills, anger management, uh, uh, self esteem. Uh, I I talk a lot about the uh, so called victim mentality. Um, you know, different things, um, and, and and I you know I definitely uh, would appreciate your comments. Um, and again, I don't, you can, uh, disagree with me, right. Even in, in, with my clients, right. I teach, I run a, uh, I'm a manager for a, uh, alternative sentencing substance abuse treatment program. And when I do groups, I actually allow, uh, my clients to raise their hands and, you know, ask questions. Obviously, uh, I don't see the point of someone sitting in a group if they're not gonna, uh, be able to understand what's, uh, being talked about. Also, I don't try to make people agree with my way of thinking, right? I want them uh, to challenge me if they feel if they feel the need to do so, and and I will answer them. I will answer uh, uh, or uh, uh, support my position. Let's say if they uh, disagree with me, but I encourage them to do so. I think that it uh, it creates good dialogue uh, for everyone. And we all are able to, uh, basically are able to learn from that. So uh, definitely feel free uh, to give me your uh, your thoughts. So anyway, uh, coming from the six pillars of self-esteem, uh, uh, this section is, is called uh, self-esteem as a basic need. If the power of self-esteem derives from the fact that it is a profound need, what precisely is a need? A need is that which is required for our effective functioning. We do not merely want food and water. We need them. Without them, we die. However, we have other nutritional needs such as calcium, whose impact is less direct and dramatic. It says, uh, in some regions in Mexico, the soil contains no calcium. The inhabitants of these regions do not perish outright, but their growth is stunted. They are generally debilitated and they are a prey to many diseases to which the lack of calcium makes them highly susceptible. They are impaired in their ability to function. Self-esteem is a... Uh, Excuse me. Uh, Self-esteem is a need uh, similar to calcium rather than to food and water. Lacking it to a serious degree, we do not necessarily die, but we are impaired in our ability to function. Right. And so, again, um, so is this again is talking about uh, self-esteem as a need. And it goes into a little bit more detail about uh, self-esteem as being a need. But again, um, I would just wanted to to point out the fact where uh, they're making the the uh, uh, the point, right? That it is a uh, uh, so again it says a need is that which is required for our effective functioning. So effective functioning. So if, if they're saying effective functioning, you can have ineffective functioning, which means that um, you're still functioning but it's ineffective. You're not, 
um, living uh, to your full potential. You're not uh, necessarily accomplishing the things that you intended to accomplish, right? But you're still functioning. You're still living. You're still alive, right? But with effective functioning, then you're functioning according uh, to your uh, potential and you are accomplishing the things that you set out to accomplish in the first place. Right. And having an impaired uh, self-esteem, um, this is how it affects us. Right. We don't uh, live to our full potential because we don't um, put our full effort into things. And again, there's a reason because, again, we don't have confidence in ourselves. And it goes in, in, in another place in the book. It talks about that. It goes kind of in a circular uh, motion. Right. Uh, so. Um, we build self-esteem by doing stuff, by doing esteemable acts, by doing things that we can be proud of. And as we uh, uh, do things that we can be proud of, we get motivated to do even more things that we can be proud of. Right. There is nothing better uh, uh, and, and more uh, beneficial to a, to a man or, or just to a, a human being in general. Right. Then. Uh, responsibility, true responsibility, and being able to take responsibility for their actions, uh, for their family, and for their own condition in life, right? And and so many of us, we walk around angry and uh, depressed because we we feel we feel like victims. We feel like the the six uh, the system have betrayed us. Uh, sometimes we may even feel like our country or our family or our community has betrayed us. That no one is on our side, that no one is uh, uh, there to to uh, assist us, and uh, and we don't know what to do, right? And, and again, this is a a uh, a problem, right? And again, I, I call it the uh, the victim mentality, and um, and it's hard, and, and and I do believe that um, it's hard, especially in in, in our current climate to not have the victim mentality, right? Because it, it, uh, for one, it, it, in some ways it feels better. Um, I, I, uh, in the big picture, I don't think it feels better. Um, I think it makes you feel worse, but immediately I think it makes you feel better because if I say that the things that happened in my life were my fault, right? Were my responsibility, and like all of the problems that occurred with me were my responsibility based on my decisions. Um, it doesn't feel as good uh, to me immediately as it, then if I was to say that um, I was the victim of circumstance or I was the uh, victim of the system or that uh, my again, my socioeconomic status uh, caused me to uh, do the things that I did in life. Right. And again, I served uh, prison time. I'm a felon. I served 21 years in prison, uh, went in at the age of 17, didn't get out till I was 21 years old. And I tell some people sometimes that uh, getting that and I had a life sentence and uh, that getting that life sentence was probably because of the way that I was living my life was probably the best thing that could have happened to me at that time. Right. Uh, and for some people like, man, you're, you're freaking crazy. Uh, to say something like that, but I'm not crazy. I'm honest, right? Uh, at that time in my life, I was messing up, right? And I was not going to stop messing up. Um, I was, I was, I, there was no thought in my mind about doing the right thing, about uh, educating myself. Uh, when I did attend school, I would just go to school uh, to mess up. I never did schoolwork. I'm talking about from kindergarten on through uh, 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 10th grade, I believe I, uh, when I, uh, got my life sentence, I was in a uh, 10th grade, um, never put any effort in it whatsoever. Right. Never even tried. It wasn't because of the condition of the school. I never put any effort there. The opportunities were there, but I didn't avail myself for the opportunity. And it, and it's really shameful because, you know, when we, when we look at our conditions, right? And we talk so much about, again, what the government is doing and not doing systemic racism and all these different things and how 
uh, we don't have opportunities that other people have. Now, there was a time that this was true. Right? There was a time that this was true, right? When our parents and grandparents actually had to fight for us to just have the opportunity to get an education, right? To have an opportunity to uh, 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 to get a, a, a decent career and things, but that is not the case right now. And and the things, a lot of uh, many of the things that we fight about that we're calling a civil rights struggle is, in my opinion, just some fucking bullshit, right? We're 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 fighting for uh, about terms, right? We 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 don't even want people to be able to speak to us, right? We want we we want to gain rights by eliminating rights, right? The freedom of speech, for example, right? Um, I fully support people being whatever they whatever they are, as long as they're not causing harm to someone else, to another individual, right? Uh, they make their decisions and they're not causing harm to anyone else, right? To be whatever they want, right? As far as their, um, let's say, sexual orientation or gender identity and all that stuff, right? And and I and I don't support anyone that feels the need to, in any way, uh, physically uh, uh, cause them harm, right? Physically or emotionally, right? However, um, I don't believe that. Uh, me not referring to someone by a certain, let's say, pronoun, right, is causing them harm in any way. Um, now, and again, I don't have a problem with using pronouns, or I didn't, right? I think that making it a government requirement, making it punishable by law, is one of the things that makes some people, um, uh, uh, act against it or speak and speak against uh, certain things because again, you're, you're forcing people to do certain things and, and you can't, you can't force anyone to like you. Like I can't force someone to like me because I'm black, let's say, right? Because again, one of the big things that we always see if someone disagrees with us, we automatically, that person gets a label. If they, uh, happen to be white, for example, then they're going to get the label of being a racist or, or, or if there was a white woman, uh, she's probably going to be called a Karen or something like that, right? Um, and it's true, there are some people that are racist. However, who cares, right? Who cares, right? If you don't like me, <laughs> I don't give a shit, right? <clears throat> Nor... Uh, can I force you to like me? Nor can you force me to like you. I don't freaking like every single individual, right? Um, my likes and dislikes uh, generally, though, are uh, based on individuals and their actions, right? What they do, right? And there are some people that I don't like based on their actions, right? So like if I run across, let's say, uh, uh, somebody that's, uh, let's say, a child molester, for example, right? I'm not going to like that person. I don't give a shit what, what race they are. I'm not going to like them based on their actions, uh, regardless of their race, right? And uh, and we we think that we have to make people like us, and we we uh, uh, begin to feel self conscious if people don't like us, and we spend so much time focusing on who likes us and don't like us, who's giving us things and not giving us things, that we never actually um, put an effort into getting our own, right? Actually, uh, uh, let's say starting a business, for example, it's not difficult um, to start a business. It's somewhat difficult to maintain that business and to make that business grow and, 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 and to thrive and to be successful with that business, uh, with that business venture, right? It takes a lot of time, effort, and thought has to go into that. And, and for many of us, we don't have the time to put the effort into it because we spend so much time worried about things that don't matter, right? Again, people that like us and don't like us. And I do believe that this is a self-esteem issue, right? Because if I have 
uh, uh, confidence in myself, right? Then it 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 matters very little to me um, what someone else thinks about me and whether or not this person is going to help me. Now, help is always appreciated. You know, I I can, you know, we can always uh, use people's help, right? So, I mean, for example, right? I got plenty of of uh, business ideas that I would like to do. Uh, I don't necessarily currently have the financial resources to get them done. Right. Um, but that's not going to stop me from getting them done. Right. Those resources at some point, uh, they will come. Right. And they're not just going to drop out of the sky. I'm going to have to, uh, uh, make it happen. Right. But they will come. And, and I'm, and I'm confident in that and I'm doing certain things in order to make it happen. Right. Um, so again, I will use programs that are, uh, 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 let's say provided by the government, let's say if they're available, uh, but when they're not available, I'm going to figure out some other way, uh, to get it done. I don't care. Um, if I got a, a, a business idea or something that I know, um, is going to make money, um, I don't give a shit even if I have to uh, beg for money to get it right. As long as I get the money and I'm able to, to accomplish the goal. Right. But some of us, we're going to have pride and we're going to say, I'm not going to beg for nothing. And we're going to stay stuck in whatever position that we're in. Right. Due to false pride, right. False pride. And when we have a healthy level of self-esteem, we we're able to have actual pride. Right. And, and I do believe it's the false pride that is identified as one of the so-called seven deadly sins. Right. And, and a lot of times people will generally uh, they'll refer to pride as being one of the uh, seven deadly sins. I say, excuse me, it's the false pride that is the. Uh, 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 the deadly sin. Right. There's nothing wrong with being proud of uh, accomplishing something good, right, of doing something good, being there and, and helping someone uh, to achieve their goals. Right. You should be proud of the things that you do. Um, um, and, and again, um, as you as you do these things, you begin to develop uh, more confidence in yourself. That's your uh, self-efficacy. Right. So when we talk about this idea of self-esteem, we have self-efficacy and self-respect and our self-efficacy is our confidence in our competence. Right. So it's our confidence in our ability to function in our ability to succeed in life, in our um, uh, ability to accomplish our goals. Right. And so if I have confidence in my ability to accomplish my goals, then it's more likely that I'm going to set goals. But if I have no confidence in my ability to accomplish my goals, then why would I set goals? Why would I spend time uh, setting goals um, when I know that I'm not going to be able to accomplish them? Right. Because and I say that I, when I know that I'm not going to be able to accomplish them, because what we believe. Right. Um, we can believe something and it may not necessarily be actual reality, but it's the reality for us. Right. It's the reality for our life and the situation that we live in uh, at that time. And uh, so if I believe that I'm not going to be able to accomplish my goals, if I believe that um, systemic racism is keeping me from being successful, if I believe that there are no resources available, then I'm not going to put a lot of effort into trying to um, uh, uh, look for those resources because I believe they're not available. And therefore I would just be wasting my time. I might as well, um, uh, just spend, uh, my time, uh, uh, looking at, um, uh, uh, non-educational, uh, uh, stuff on, uh, the different, uh, social media platforms. Right. Um, which I do sometimes, right. I like entertaining stuff. I like funny videos. I love, uh, uh, uh cat videos. Um, uh, I even, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, look at all kind of uh, different uh, things on the uh, videos, whether uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, uh, the YouTube shorts. And, and I, there are times where I find myself uh, stuck. Right. I got a, a ADHD brain 
and I will uh, get stuck, right? You know, maybe go on there looking at one thing and the next thing you know, it's like an hour, hour and a half later and I'm still scrolling through freaking videos, right? Haven't accomplished anything during that hour, right? And, you know, that's fine, right? It, it happens. But if that's my main thing that I'm doing throughout the day, right? And I'm not successful, right? That is, that would be the determining factor as to why I'm not successful, not systemic racism, not the government. Now, I, I challenge you to set a plan, right? Make a, make a plan, let's say for a business, for example, or set a goal, something that you want to accomplish for your life, right? Set a, a, uh, and, and, and I'm, I hate to use the term realistic goal, right? Because your the things that you can accomplish are only limited by your, uh, what you can think, right? What you believe for yourself, right? You have so many people, um, that have accomplished so many different things if you look at, let's say, someone like Oprah Winfrey's uh, beginning and you just talk about her beginning, I'm talking about her, uh, let's say, from birth, from conception to, let's say, the age of 12 or 13, let's say, um, and you looked at her, uh, uh, there is nothing about her conditions and or situations that would lead you to believe that she would ever uh, uh, have become, let's say, a billionaire. Uh, for example, right? Nothing. But she did, right? And she did because she took certain actions to help her uh, achieve her goals, right? And there are some of us that will stand up and we'll call her a, a, a sellout and, and make all these negative uh, terms and comments about her um, uh, due to, uh, because of her accomplishments. Um, uh, and we feel that she should be um, giving her money to everybody, especially to us, let's say, in the uh, uh, black community or minority community, um, because she have it. She should share the wealth. Right. And, and she she gives a lot. She she has a lot of different things that she do that she does. Right. But even if she didn't give a single penny to another individual, she don't have to. She worked for that. She earned what she earned and she earned it. Right. And I grew up at a time when they said that um, if you don't work, you don't eat. Right. People people use terms like that. But we said it, but we really didn't believe it because we always want someone to give us something. Right. And when we have a healthy level of self-esteem, um, we we begin to realize that we can earn whatever we want, that we can accomplish whatever we want. Now, again, I, hell, I accept charity, right? I'll accept if someone uh, wants to give me something, because again, that was something else that we would say, like, I, I know, you know, I'm not a charity case, right? We looked at it like it was a bad thing if we accepted someone giving us something or we, we accepted charity, right? And again, that's a self-esteem issue, right? Uh, so, um, with a healthy level of self-esteem, we build that, that confidence in our competence, right? In our ability to function, our ability to accomplish our goals. And with that confidence, we begin to actually do things that are going to help us to be successful. And then we begin to gain momentum moving forward towards success, right? And some of us more slowly than others. I'll say for myself, I am not uh, uh, necessarily moving as fast uh, uh, with my success as I would like to, right? I'm nowhere near, uh, accomplishing the things that I would really like to accomplish. I'm definitely not financially where I would like to be. I have, or still have significant debt. And because I I'm continuing to pursue my goals and, and, and pursuing my goals and, and, and our business ventures, uh, our cost money, right? My debt right now is growing, right? And someone else, you know, looking at the situation would say that, 
dude, you, you know, you're, you're, you're gaining more debt than income. And at the moment that is true, right? But I don't believe that that is, uh, that that is going to be the end of the story, right? That that's going to be the end of the story, right? Because I'm going to continue to put the effort into being successful. And as I do, and as I am and, and, uh, become successful, I will continue to work to bring other people with me and, and teach them and help them to be successful, right? Um, whenever you're successful and, and you're able to accomplish things, um, you want to bring people with you and, and, and help them to be successful as well. And this is one uh, thing that I will give to, let's say a lot of the, the, let's say the immigrants, uh, that come over here. And a lot of us will look and we'll see, you know, let's say a group of immigrants that'll come over and, and the whole group end up being ultimately being very successful with their business ventures and, and uh, having money and all this stuff. And we'll think that uh, 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 try to make it look like the government was just on their side and they gave them something and we didn't have the same opportunities they had. But the difference between us and them is that they actually help each other, right? They will come together and they will pull their money um, to do things and to accomplish their goals, right? Instead of them uh, going out and buying a bunch of, let's say, expensive cars and expensive rims to put on their cars and trying to look good, right? They will save their money, maybe live in conditions that we're not willing to live in, maybe an overcrowded apartment and things like that, while they save their money so it can be invested in, in, in something that's going to grow. But we, we, we put our money into liabilities, right? We get that expensive car or expensive house and stuff like that. Even like uh, a home, right? Buying a, a, a really expensive home. A lot of us, we think of it as an asset. But in reality, your home, uh, an expensive home, unless you're, let's say, in a real estate market where you're, you know, buying and flipping houses, your th that house is actually technically a liability. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I think it's a good thing, honorable thing to own your own home. But it is a, a liability. It's something that costs you money, not makes you money. Right. You're going to have to you're going to pay property taxes. You're going to have to pay for the maintenance and upkeep of that home. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not bringing in any income. And let's say unless let's say uh, uh, you're renting out a room or something. Right. Or, or, or let's say you bought a house and, you, and you're renting it out to someone else. Um, you're, it's not actually making you money. So it, it's not a, 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 an investment. It is a, 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 or it's not an asset. It's a liability. Right. And so we don't we don't think about things like that. And, and those of us that have a poor mindset and, and there are many of us and I, and I am saying us. Right. I'm not saying I like using the term you people. Right. I like using that term because um, it offends a lot of people, <laughs> first of all. Uh, and, I, and I find it funny uh, that people get offended by a simple, simple phrase. Um, but I am saying us. Right. And us includes me. Right. Uh, there are many of us that have uh, a poor man's mindset, right? We have a poor man's mindset. And again, this goes to our level of self-esteem. We believe that we are not as capable or that we are um, uh, don't necessarily have the same abilities that other people have, right? And we have just as much and sometimes more than other people, right? Um, even if we, 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 uh, uh, but because we don't evaluate things and look at things um, according to the facts, we look at things according to the narrative that is presented to us. Right. But we don't look at them according to facts. Right. Um, so uh, uh, even if we talk about um, and I haven't even fully got into. uh uh, the things about the reading, the things that I read from the book. Right. And, uh, but I, I think these things are important, right? Some of these, these ideas, right. Uh, so let's say, uh, one of the, one of the, the major ideas, um, that we're dealing with now, um, that I consider to be a part of the, 
poor man's mindset and and uh, the victim mentality is the concept of something uh, uh, like, uh, let's say, the, the, the term uh, white privilege. Right. We hear this term a lot. White privilege, for example. Right. And, and again, I, I get, you know, what people are saying. And uh, however. I think we got it backwards. Right. So when we talk about privilege. Right. Number one, um, I don't believe. Uh, that there's anything wrong, number one, with having certain privileges or whatever, if you if you happen to have privileges. But I don't think right now there is necessarily a, 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 a true in a, in a true sense, a white privilege. Right. And, and I would even challenge uh, you to to show me where the right white privilege is at. Right. But OK, so let's talk privilege. Right. So when we look at, let's say, things that are trending. Right. Most of the time when we see things that are trending, we will see things that come from uh, different minority communities, whether black and or uh, Hispanic or Asian communities, where we will have people all over the world um, imitating certain uh, 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 behaviors uh, that we do. Right. Um, uh, uh, or, or things that are, let's say, common uh, to us. Right. And, and we even turn that into a victim thing. I think it's more of an honor that people find uh, something that you do so cool that they want to imitate you. But the victim mentality gets us to start using terms like uh, culture vulture. Right. Um, and, and they call people culture vultures who will. Uh, 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 let's say do certain things that um, that uh, uh, one particular group have claimed as being their own, right? Like, let's say if you see a, a, a white person uh, that happens to be a, a, a rapper or uh, 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 wearing braids and stuff like that, right? Even though things like braids and music are not particular to black, right? So we're going to, you know, some people say, well, rap is particular to black, um, but uh, no. Right. Um, and, and as far as I'm concerned, music has no race. Right. I believe that music like comedy, um, in my opinion, should be immune to being categorized as, according to a, a certain racial perspective, uh, a certain a social, uh, excuse me, a certain racial group. Right. But. Again, we will we will uh, we see people that that do these things again that um, are, are popular among like minority members. So if we say uh, uh, rapping, for example, uh, uh, certain types of dances, uh, uh, fist bump, uh, certain type of slang uh, that people use. Um, uh, uh, the way that people choose to walk and or dance. Um, you know, I even seen uh, uh, where you'll see people all over. Um, they'll do things like, let's say, the uh, sea walk challenge, for example, or the sea walk or the crip walk, or whatever uh, challenge. And uh, and it will be people white, black, you know, people from different countries, you know, doing this. And, uh, you know, usually using like the dub C uh, 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 song and stuff like that. And to me, it's cool. Right. Whoever's doing it. And, and, and I even find it especially entertaining, you know, when I see, let's say, an old, you know, old, very old, let's like, say, white dude, uh, you know, trying to, you know, sea walk or something like that. Right. I think it's, it's interesting. It's cool or funny, um, entertaining. Right. And then, you know, I'll go through the I always go to comments to the videos because uh, sometimes to me, the comments are more entertaining than the videos. Right. And, and again, you'll see some of the people, you know, be like, oh, yeah, he's cool. He's invited to the barbecue and this and that. But then you'll have the people. Oh, he's a culture vulture. We can't have anything. They try to take everything from us. And and that's the that's the wrong way. Again, in my opinion, to look at the situation, that would be the same uh, uh, idea that, let's say, whites, for example, had with uh, uh, sports. Right. Uh, especially professional sports in the United States uh, back in the days when they didn't want to 
uh, let people like Jackie Robinson or Jack Johnson and and these people into sports. Right. Um, they didn't want to let them in. And then when these people came in, they became the greatest. Right. Uh, in these in, in, in their fields. Right. They became the greatest in these different sports, even though um, they had not really played the sports anymore. And, and it appears that sometimes we end up being afraid that these people are going to outdo us. Right. I hear some of the talk on people like uh, Eminem, for example. Some people will say uh, that he's trash. Some people will say that he's one of the greatest. Um, I think um, he is uh, very great. In my opinion, he is very creative. He is a uh, 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 an excellent artist. Um, and just like the rest of us, he's made some bad decisions in his life. But um, I would consider him um, when we talk hip hop and uh, 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 battle rappers and and anything else, I would consider him as being one of the greats. And, and I don't say that just to limit him to those categories. I think he's he is a good artist. But again, some people will say he is a culture vulture based on um, uh, the uh, the type of music that he uses. Right. Um, so, again, I believe this is this is uh, goes along uh, with this uh, victim mentality. Right. But when we have confidence in our own ability, we're not afraid of other people uh, coming into the industry. Right. And uh, and and them being good. Right. So when we see somebody that's good, that shouldn't cause us fear. That should motivate us to be to be even better. Right. Now you have competition. Right. When you have businesses or companies that don't have competition, usually that company just pretty much stays the same. But when they get challenged, they're constantly uh, battling to be the best. Right. So you look you look at companies like, let's say, Samsung, for example, uh, 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 Samsung was a low man on the totem pole when they started. Right now they are competing or have surpassed. Let's say some uh, companies like Apple, for example, and I don't know money. I'm, I haven't researched uh, how much they're worth and compared to Apple and stuff like that. But I mean, as far as their popularity in their products, and I think, in my opinion, their products are better than Apple. And obviously there are difference of opinion on that. Right. But um, but they they are a company that are rivaling companies that started way before. Uh, 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 they ever came into existence, right? Because they continue to improve rather than sitting there uh, wondering how they could stop someone else from, from doing certain things. They just continue to get better. And that's what we as a community, as a country, as a people, as a society, we have to do um, is continue to motivate ourselves to become better. But we're not going to have any motivation to do that if we don't continue uh, to improve our confidence in ourself. Right. Um, if we don't continue to recognize and realize and internalize the fact that no one on this earth is better than you. Right. No one on this earth is better than you. Um, you're not better than anyone else. We're just different. We have our different ways of doing things. We have our different ways of thinking and we can be as successful or more successful than anyone else on this earth. Right. And so the low self-esteem. So, again, we talk about self-esteem as a basic need. Right. So the low self-esteem impairs our ability to function in life. Right. And so the and, and the the poor man's uh, excuse me, the poor man's. Uh, uh, mindset is on the low self esteem uh, excuse me low self esteem spectrum right the low self esteem spectrum and 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 until we can uh get out uh, and away from that that low self esteem and begin to rise up mentally we will stay poor and broke right and i'm not talking about uh becoming rich. I'm talking about becoming wealthy. That's what we want to do. I mean, I would like to become rich right now. <clears throat> However, 
I would like to become wealthy, right? I want to have, you know, my money and my uh, accomplishments to transcend the generations, right? And, uh, and I believe that I can do this, right? I haven't done it yet. I believe I can do it. And I'm saying that I believe this as an ex-con, right? Someone who grew up um, never uh, uh, educating themselves. I never did anything in school, didn't even get a GED until um, I was incarcerated, facing a life sentence, and got a GED in the county jail and took some college courses while I was in prison. Um, and that's when I began to uh, educate myself and got out and, 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 and got on the path of, of beginning to educate myself. Right. And, and, and besides the time that I served in juvenile hall and juvenile placement and California youth authority and state prison, um, um, the last term of loan, right. 21 years straight, uh, uh, of incarceration. Right. And, uh, and again, I'm nowhere near, uh, uh, the things that, that I believe or within my potential, but I still say that um, I will accomplish these things, right? But I'm not going to accomplish them by sitting up waiting for someone to give me something. I'm going to accomplish them by performing certain actions to help me to be successful, and 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 I'm going to continue to work on my level of self esteem so that I am internally motivated to do the things that I know that I can do. Now, am I saying that I have a high level self-esteem that is always at a high level? No, right? Our self-esteem will fluctuate. Some days our self-esteem will be better than other days. Um, however, most of the time we want to have a healthy level of self-esteem. And again, we, we continue to improve and maintain our self-esteem by continuing to improve and maintain ourself. Right. And so again, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me again. This was, this is the, uh, second, uh, uh, video in a series of videos that we will be talking about, uh, self-esteem and the effects of self-esteem on our life. Um, hopefully, um, you were able to get something from the video and, and, uh, hopefully you would like and, and, and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, please leave your comments. Even if you don't agree, uh, with things that I said, please leave your video, uh, excuse me, please leave your comments. And I would even say, especially if you don't agree, uh, with what I said, leave your comments, tell me what you don't agree with, uh, and, and, and uh, give me some ideas that I can, I can speak on something and, or clarify uh, something that I say.